So welcome back to the 52 weeks journey of a lifetime. This is to ensure everyone reads the entire Bible in a year. So our series is called Walk Through the Bible. We started with the Old Testament, of course. There are two parts of uh, the Bible, the Old and the New. So from the Old Testament, we're done with the first five books from Genesis to Deuteronomy called the Pentateuch. We're done with the 12 historical books from Joshua to Esther. We're done with the third section of, uh, of the Old Testament, the books of poetry from Job to Songs of so Song of Solomon. So we're entering the fourth section of the Old Testament. And these are the prophets, the prophets which, uh, which is divided into two, major and minor. So we will start with the major prophets uh, from Isaiah to Daniel. All right, let's start with the book of Isaiah. This is lesson number 18. So we have a lot of things to learn no? tonight. Nako, saya -saya naman. So, ano ba na ba yung matututunan natin sa book of Isaiah? So, since we, we are now entering the final section of the Old Testament, no, the prophets, the poetical books, no, alam nyo ba, na we, which we just studied, were uh, written uh, during the Golden Age of Israel na kung saan ay si David at si Solomon ang naghahari. And those, it was called the Golden Age if you were if you watched before yung mga previous uh, series, uh, uh, previous uh, teachings natin sa so Walk Through the Bible. We talked about the Golden Age of Israel. Uh, these were the time na super okay sila, may peace, may prosperity, wala masyadong problema. In lang, the prophetical books na pag-uusapan natin which will start with the book of Isaiah today. Uh, uh, Kung baga, the, prophet prof prof <laughs> the prophetical books na we will now study eh, were written during the days of nako, gloom. Days of gloom naman when Israel had abandoned their religion and their God. Mm -hmm. Kaya nga, in Deuteronomy 18.15.22, no, maalala niyo doon, Moses wrote that God would raise up prophets to declare His message, messages. So, may sagot agad ang Panginoon doon. No? And, of course, God did just that. No? So, uh, mapapansin niyo, uh, sabi natin before, no, uh, yung Proverbs, ang ibig sabihin yung pro Ibig sabihin, instead of, and then yung verba, ibig sabihin naman, words. Kaya instead of many words, no? So, kung sa ano naman, sa word na prophet, ganun din yung pro, ibig sabihin, instead of, and then yung path, eh, to speak. So, parang someone is speaking instead of you, parang ganun. So, parang sila yung messengers, parang ganun. So, the office of prophet no ay nagsimula yan during the time of Samuel and ended with Malachi alam niyo naman yung Malachi yun yung last book sa Old Testament no the time of the prophets can be divided into two parts no before the 8th century kasi you know, BC the prophets were primarily spokesmen to the kings no sila Samuel, Nathan, Elijah, Elisha, yun yung mga sample no. And then during and after the 8th century uh, BC, eh, the prophets uh, the prophets geared their messages to the nation of Israel as a whole. And sometimes even sa mga foreign nations no. Also during this time, the prophets messages began to be written down and preserved. So medyo naging high tech na ng konti. So mapapansin niyo naman the books of prophecy are divided you no know, sa five major prophets and 12 minor prophets so you know, sa bandang uh, right part ng screen niyo. You no know, kasi they are not called uh, major and minor because some are more important than the others no but because of the amount of material in each book Yan, kasi mas, mar mas marami na susulat dun sa mga major prophets. The prophets were authoritative no? during their time. Very influential. Mga influential teachers sila because they were directly 
no or direct spokesperson a spokesman ng Panginoon they received their messages directly from God and preached them to the people mm-hmm. kaya uh, mga astig no to mga prophets na to the prophets were very unpopular nga lang during their time well hanggang ngayon naman eh. the prophets were very unpopular in their own time because bakit they spoke against immorality and yung religious apostasy ng Israel. Wala, explain ko sa inyo, yung apostasy, yung paikot-ikot na yung circle na sin, for, uh, as repentance, then forgiveness, then sin ulit, then repentance, yun yung apostasy. Now, such preaching naman is unpopular in any age kahit ngayon. So, although prophets no, spoke primarily to the people of their own day concerning their own problems, God did enable them to look into the future. No? Si Isaiah nga is an excellent example of a prophet who spoke to his own time as well as about the future. Yeah, malalaman natin mamaya ano ba yung mga prophetic na sinabi ni Isaiah. So, tanong ko sa inyo, kung titignan niyo itong uh, diagram na ito, eh, si Isaiah, saang prophet siya or saang kingdom siya no? bilang prophet uh, nagmumula? Okay, kung titingnan niyo sa left side ng inyong ng screen magsisimula doon yung story of creation noon uh, mula kay Noah, Abraham, Isaac, Jacob and then kay Joseph. So 2000 years 'yon. And then magkakaroon ng bondage uh, stage na pinangunahan ni, Mo- ni Moses at ni Joshua, no 1500 'yon. And then pasok yung judges uh, uh, Si Deborah, Gideon, Samson, Samuel are yung mga sample ng mga judges. And then sa 1000 BC, pasok naman yung United Kingdom na pinungunahan ni Saul. So yung first king, and then si David, and then Solomon. After lang uh, ng, ng Golden Age. Ito yung Golden Age, no? Pumasok sa 931 before no, before Christ. Eh, na-divide yung Israel. So sa upper part ng screen nyo, yan yung Israel, okay? Na under Assyrian captivity. Ito yung sampung lost tribes. No? At ang prophet nila doon, si Jonah, si Amos, at saka si Hosea. Okay? Pero nauna silang maano, ma- ma-captivate ng, uh, ng mga foreigners. No? Pero itong Judah, late na ito na-captivate. Eh. Uh, nakaka-captivate sa kanila yung Babylonian Empire. Pero mapapansin nyo, yung Southern Kingdom, si Judah, Eh, ang mga prophet naman dyan, sina Obadiah, Joel, Isaiah, yung ating bida ngayon, si Micah, uh, Jeremiah, Nahum, Zebaniah, at si Habakuk. Habakuk. Yan. Habakuk, ibig sabihin, mahaba magluto. <laughs> Tagal magluto. Habakuk. <laughs> Last ko na yan. <laughs> so, uh, Babylon, Babylonian, Babylonian captivity naman. Andiyan naman mga prophet noon, si Daniel, si Ezekiel, Tapos uh, na-restore yung Judah Israel, si Ezra, Nehemiah. Yung, kaya nga sila yung nag-rebuild ng walls, di ba si Nehemiah. And then Zechariah, Haggai, and then yung last part ng Old Testament, si Malachi. So yan, yeah, at least meron kayong overview. Tanong, no? sino yung um, uh, mga kontemporaryo ni Isaiah na propeta sa kabila, sa kabilang kingdom? Eh, Siyempre, si na Jonah, si na Amos. At saka si Hosea kasi pareha sila ng timeline na pinagsimulan. Alright. So yan, at least may, mayroon na kayong idea. So, tingnan naman natin. Now, one of the best known passages, alam nyo, sa, sa book of Isaiah, yung Isaiah 6, 1-9, which is actually, habang ginagawa ko to nagkaroon ako na idea, oh, maganda ko itong i-preach. Ha. Siguro mga, mga, asa, mga next next Sunday or may two Sundays from now, baka i-preach ko to kasi very interesting very interesting so tingnan natin ano ba nangyari dito no here we find the secret of Isaiah's life yan so while he is worshiping in the temple Isaiah experiences a vision of the Lord Isaiah's experience with the Lord can be divided no sa five steps yun ano ano ba tong mga five steps na to Pero bago yan, eh, basahin natin mismo yung Isaiah 6, 1 to 9 para ma-idea tayo kung ano yung nag-uusapan natin. So, Isaiah's call and mission, in the year that King Uzziah died, 
I saw the Lord seated on a high and lofty throne. And the hem of his robe filled the temple. So nagkaroon siya ng vision. Seraphim were standing above him. They each had six wings. With two, they covered their faces. With two, they covered their feet. And with two, they flew. And one called to another, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord of armies. His glory fills the whole earth. <clears throat> the foundations of the doorways shook at the sound of their voices, and the temple was filled with smoke. And I said, Woe is me, for I am ruined, because I am a man of unclean lips, and live among a people of unclean lips, and because my eyes have seen the King, the Lord of armies. Then one of the seraphim flew to me, and in his hand, was a glowing coal that he had taken from the altar with tongs. He touched my mouth with it and said, Now that this is, has touched your lips, your iniquity is removed and your sin is atoned for. Wow! Then I heard the voice of the Lord asking, Who will I send? Who will go for us? I said, Here I am. Send me. And he replied, Go. Say to these people, keep listening, but do not understand. Keep looking, but do not perceive. Wow. No, kung sa summarize mo, no, ano nangyari doon? No, si Isaiah na convict. No, convicted siya. Sabi niya, woe is me for I am done. No? Tapos nag-confess na siya ng kasalanan niya. Tapos anong ginawa ng angel? kinlens yung kasalanan niya. And then, karoon siya ng commitment. Sabi niya, here I am, Lord, send me. Kaya ang papansin niyo, you know. Here I am. So, tapos ang last part, Isaiah is commissioned. No? Pinadala, ginamit siya. Kaya, to be honest, ang tagal ko nang pinag-iisipan to. Gusto ko magpatato sa paan ng send me. <laughs> yung two words na yan. <laughs> no? For me to be reminded, every time I will look at my foot, no? uh, particularly left foot, kasi uh, sabi nga ng Biblia, how beautiful the feet of those who you know spread the Gospels, no? uh, um, do missionary works. No? I want to be reminded every day that God is sending me and I said yes. Because one day I want to go out from the comfort of the local church and, you know, you'll still be pastoring locally, but, you know, from time to time, go out and do missionary works. Because it's yung feeling na you, you're doing yung pinipreach mo talaga. No? Anyway, Isaiah came on the scene at the turning point in the history of the divided kingdom. You know? Dumating siya, mapansin nyo, ayan, ibibilugan ko siya dito, ayan. So, nasa, ito yung divided kingdom, ayan. So, nandito siya. The kingdom of Judah was anxious, seeking a defense against Assyrians. Mm. Kasi na-capture niya ng Assyrians ang Israel. So, during this time, Isaiah called the people of Judah to rebirth no, and renewal. So his eloquent and timely messages helped the nation of Judah avoid falling into the captivity of the Assyrians as had happened to the northern kingdom of Israel. Ay naman, talaga may gamit naman pala itong si Kuya Isaiah. Naman, hindi sila na-capture dahil uh, chinalan siya yung Judah. No? Huwag tayong gumaya sa mga kapatid natin sa 10 tribes ng Israel na na-capture ng Assyrian. Eh, tayo ay magkaroon ng rebirth at renewal sa Panginoon. At sigurado hindi niya tayo papahamak. Wow, what a timely uh, reminder for us during these times of COVID-19. No? At uh, during these times of uh, political turmoil, uh, nahati ang mga tao politically. But uh, let's all go back to God and be rebirthed and renew our relationship with Him. Alam niyo, many of Isaiah's prophecies speak of basic human nature and therefore applicable to every generation. No? Subukan natin magbasa. Bakit naging applicable to all generation? No? So, at basic human nature ang sinasabi ni Isaiah. So, Isaiah 123, halimbawa, your rulers are rebels, friends of thieves. They all love craft 
and chase after bribes. They do not defend the rights of their fatherless and the widow's case never comes before them. O sabihin mo yan sa mga politicians at leader ngayon, malamang eh, hinahunt down ka na. Diba? How about sa Isaiah 50, 20-23? Diba? Woe to those who call evil good and good evil, who substitute darkness for light and light for darkness, who substitute bitter for sweet and sweet for bitter. Woe to those who consider themselves wise and judge themselves clever. Woe to those who are heroes or, uh, at drinking wine, who are champions at pouring beer, who acquit the guilty for a bribe and deprive the innocent of justice. Mm, sabihin mo rin yan sa mga leaders ngayon, <laughs> sa mga politicians at you know, people who are in authority. Eh talagang kakainisan ka. Sabi niya nga, no absolute right or wrong ang mga tao ngayon. Excessive drinking, taking bribes. Nako. Ganyan ka-bold si Isaiah. Eh, hindi naman talaga siya bold. Yung lips niya were made bold by God kasi ginawa mouthpiece ng Panginoon. How about sa Isaiah, 20, uh, Isaiah 10 verses 1 to 2? Sabi niya, Woe to those enacting crooked statutes and writing oppressive laws to keep the poor from getting a fair trial and to deprive the needy among my people of justice so that widows can be their, their spoil and they can plunder the fatherless. Oh, very applicable pa rin yan sa mga panahon ngayon. Di ba? Buksan mo yung mga mata mo. Napakadami pa rin ang mga pangyayaring ganyan. How about sa Isaiah 29.15? Sabi niya, Woe to those who go to great lands to hide their plans from the Lord. They do their works in the dark and say, Who sees us? Who knows us? Right? People are you know, proclaiming na walang Diyos or maaaring kunyari may Diyos sila pero they're not following God's will. Madami pa rin. Napaka, sabi nga eh, Isaiah's prophecy speak of basic human nature. No? Noon at ngayon. Tsaka applicable talaga to every generation. Hmm, alam niyo ba that the book of Isaiah was written about 700 years before dumating si Kristo. And yet it tells much about the birth, the life, the death of Christ. Oh, sigurado ka. Wala pang internet, no? wala pang Google. No? Pero 700 years before Jesus Christ, Eh, sinasabi na ni Isaiah ang patungkol sa kanyang kapanganakan, sa kanyang buhay, at sa kanyang pagkamatay. No, tingnan natin yung mga references na sinulat ni Isaiah. How about sa Isaiah 7.14? He talk about Christ. Therefore, the Lord Himself will give you a sign. See, the virgin will conceive, have a son, and name him Emmanuel. Oh, di ba? How about sa 11.1? I'm sorry, sa 50... 60. Tingnan natin kung ano yung nakasulat. Um, I gave my back to those who beat me and my cheeks to those who tore out my beard. I did not hide my face from scorn and spitting. Hmm. Diba? Sino yung naka-experience nun? About sa say 11.1. Diba sabi nun, he will be a descendant of Jesse. Diba? Galing kay David. How about sa Isaiah 53? No, verse, uh, verses 3 to 5. He was despised and rejected by men. A man of suffering who knew what sickness was. He was like someone people turned away from. He was despised and we didn't value him. Yet he himself bore our sicknesses. And he carried our pains. But we in turn regarded him stricken, struck down by God and afflicted. But he was pierced because of our rebellion, crushed because of our iniquities, punishment for our peace for our peace was on him, and we are healed by his wounds. Wow, 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 wow. Astig, no, astig. Hindi lang yun. Uh, sabi pa nga sa, uh, ano, sa Isaiah, no? Fifth, uh, ayun na nga yun. <laughs> Kamali ako. Sorry. <laughs> Mali <yung> notes ko dito. <laughs> anyway, the book of Isaiah is quoted more times, alam niyo ba? More times in the New Testament than any other prophetical book. In fact, no, this book, ang book of Isaiah, sometimes, no, tinatawag din tong, ano eh, uh, Bible in miniature. No? Bakit? Kasi, 
it's ano meron siyang 66 chapters ang Book of Isaiah. Parang kinukumpara sa 66 books ng Bible. So parang miniature talaga ng Bible. Na divided then into two parts. No, 39 chapters, no. Yung first 39 chapters. The same as the number of books in the Old Testament. And yung 27 chapters in the second, no. The same as the number of books in the New Testament. So like the Old Testament, the first section of Isaiah also speaks of judgment. And like the New Testament, the last 27 chapters speak of mercy and the coming kingdom. Wow. No? So it speak of judgment and the coming kingdom. Astig. Ay, sarap pag-usapan ng Book of Isaiah. Ang daming pwede matutunan pala dito. Ang sarap din itong i-preach, no? At uh, sarap pakinig din habang uh, nagtuturo about the Book of, uh, Book of Isaiah. Nung bago akong krisyano, no? hindi ko maintindihan ito eh. No? Pero alam nyo, kung hingi lamang tayo ng tulong sa Holy Spirit, for sure, eh, talaga naman, tutulungan tayo at, uh, at uh, papaliwanag sa ating lahat. Bubuksan ang ating mga mata. So next, Attraction next Wednesday. Pagsasamahin natin, no? Jeremiah and Lamentations. Malalaman nyo next Wednesday, but magkasama tong Jeremiah and Lamentations. Alright? Let us pray. Hallelujah. Panginoon, salamat sa Book of Isaiah. Salamat sa prophetical books. Salamat sa mga prophets. Salamat at uh, buhay pa rin. Marami pa rin propeta ngayon. Salamat, Panginoon. Dahil uh, for reminding us how you love us. No, how you loved us. How you still, how you continue to love us. How you will love us in the future. And Lord, um, today, just like I say, uh, He confesses, no, He converted, no, He was cleansed. Lord, we want to give opportunity for those people who are watching and listening to us to accept you as their personal Lord and Savior. If you are listening and watching tonight, please join us and uh, join our prayer for tonight. Lord Jesus, I repent of my sins. I ask for, for your forgiveness. I am a sinner, but I believe that you died upon the cross for me. That you shed your precious blood for the forgiveness of my sins. I accept you now as my Savior, my Lord, my God, and my friend. Come into my heart and set me free from my sin. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Allow me to bless you tonight. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord turn his face toward you. And give you peace. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. And amen. Amen. God bless you. Maraming maraming salamat sa pagsama niyo sa amin ngayong gabi. Kami po ang inyong LA First Filipino Church of the Nazarene or LA Philness. Maraming maraming salamat po. We'll see you tomorrow for our Nourish Our Soul uh, devotion. Bye.